If a sequence of random variable converges in mean square, implies it converges in probability, but not the other way around. So if it converges in probability, it doesn't have to converge in mean square. And here is an example of that. So we've got a process here, Zn, takes value 0 or n. So it's changing with n. And the probabilities of observing 0 or n changes, because it's a function of n, the probability. Let's imagine what the process could look like, different realizations for uh, given values of n. Let's say that n is 1. Then we can see that if we set n is 1 here, the probability that uh, we get the outcomes of 0 is going to be 0. So it's going to be take the value 1 for all uh, draws. So suppose we have uh, plot draws, num draw number along the horizontal, the value of z1 on the vertical, so it's going to be 1 or 0. Then you can see like first draw is going to be 1, second draw is going to be For all draws, it's going to be 1 because probability that it takes value 0 is 0. Then imagine what it's going to look like for n is 2. This time, probability that you have an outcome in any draw is 0 is a half. So it's half, half, a half for 0, half for 2 this time because n is 2. And so you could set a 50% to be about 2, 50% to be 0. Thinking of this pattern, you can see that as we increase n, it then it becomes more likely that we observe 0. If we set n to be 100, you can see here like probability of observing outcome 0 is going to be 99 over 100. So, you know, out of 100 draws, we might expect just 1 to be take the value n. Right, so from this picture, it looks like it converges in probability to zero. We have to guess, yeah, for showing convergence probability. So to converge in probability, does it converge to zero, a constant, not the random, not a random variable, uh, a zero? So we have to show from the definition that this holds. Okay, so let's answer that. Well, let's look at what this means. To say this inequality holds for any given epsilon bigger than zero, it must mean, since this Zn takes the non-negative values, um, that Zn is bigger than epsilon. When is Zn bigger than epsilon? Well, Zn can only take two values, 0 and n. Well, then that must be equivalent to Zn is equal to n, because n is bigger than 0. OK, so s probability of observing of, of this event is the same as probability of this event. So given epsilon bigger than 0, we write this is equal to this, which we know because that's given in the question, it's 1 over n. And we can see that as n tends to infinity, this probability will tend to 0. So we can conclude that Zn tends to 0 in probability. Now the question says that it doesn't converge in mean square, so let's show that. So the question is, does Zn converge in mean square to 0? So by the definition, we have to show this thing. Well, showing mean square is pretty straightforward. We know that it takes value 0 or n. Here are the probabilities. We use the law of the unconscious statistician, i.e. this thing, to do it. So it's the outcome squared times this probability plus this outcome squared times this probability, i.e. this, which comes to n, which you can see does not tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. So we conclude that Zn does not uh, tend to 0 in mean square. OK, these kind of questions have subtleties, so let's uh, make a few remarks. Zn, if Zn, the process, Zn does not converge to 0 in mean square, it doesn't imply that Zn does not converge in probability. Also, we show that Zn here converges to 0, a constant. This doesn't imply that the mean of the process is this constant, which in their case is 0. Uh, here, let's just work out what the actual mean is, expected value of this Zn. 0 times its probability plus the other outcome, n times its probability is 1, which is clearly not 0. So the, th the thing ab about those two is we can just see in this picture here, why is the mean of the process not 0? Because you can see, most, for big N, most of the values will be, vast majority will be zero, but you have the uh, very tiny probability, so it can happen that you get a very 
uh, the value n coming and as n increases it becomes more rare to observe the value n but then n gets more extreme as well so it's not bounded above so it pulls them drags the mean upwards yeah you can see here it's clearly this thing is not bounded above as n tends to infinity the outcome value will tend to infinity and this also explains why it doesn't converge in mean square because the outcome here is a function of n which is unbounded above it's getting more and more massive as n gets massive so you can see like when you compute this thing here the n uh, this probability here which is one over n doesn't is not going to kind of uh, cancel out the n above so it won't tend to zero um, if you if we think about like a histogrammy thing this is what it might look like for a case. So um, m most of the mass is around zero, tensor probability to zero. But you can see, like the mean, let's call it mu, is which is one, is is not, you know, it's not around there. Finally, uh, when I was working through the mean square one, you might have thought the following. Let's go back. You might have thought, why did they set it to zero? You know, it doesn't converge in mean square to zero. I've just shown. But you might be thinking, well, does the n converge to something else other than zero? Uh, another random variable, another constant different from zero. The answer is no, because we know that, or oh, it's a fact, just take it granted that the uh, sequence of random variables, if it converges in mean square to uh, another random variable or a constant, this implies that that sequence of random variable converges in probability to the same thing as whatever it was converged to in mean square which we're calling z here well if it did converge to some other random variable number different from zero then it must converge in probability to the same thing which would contradict what we've shown that it converges in this question to zero because the n can't converge to zero and to something else 